Always heard about Tithe Farm, but never knew how to get into it. Well, in today's video, I'm going to be doing a quick guide and updated version of Tithe Farm. For those of you guys that don't know, Jagex did just update Tithe Farm not too long ago. So I'm going to go through all the changes as well as a quick guide on the 20 by 5 method. So first of all, the things you need are a 100% Hasidious Favor, and you also need at least level 34 farming. However, there's different tiers, so you need 34 farming for the lowest seed, 54 farming for the medium seed and 74 farming for the highest seed. You do get experience rates based on what seed you use, so try to use the highest seed that you can. For your inventory, it's pretty simple. You need a spade, a seed dibber, as well as eight watering cans. Equipment, also very easy. You either should have full graceful, or if you don't have full graceful, you know it is what it is. Any weight reducing clothing is recommended. However, there's also the farming outfit as well that you can actually get from this mini game. If you have that, feel free to wear that instead of your graceful because you're not gonna run out of energy. Now, there are a few different ways to get here. My farm is located southeast of Asidius. So one way to get here is if you've been here before, just use your teleport. You can also use a Xerix talisman. This is the easiest way to get here besides the grouping teleport. You can also use memories as well or Book of the Dead if you want to do that. The other way, if you don't have any of that unlocked, is you could just walk from Port Piscarillus if you really want to and just go all the way south. But that will take quite a bit, but you should only have to do that once since you'll get the minigame teleport once you get there. So once you get here, you're going to have to talk to the farmer. And once you go through and talk to the farmer, you'll be able to walk over here and grab some seeds. So on this table, all you got to do is click and it'll ask you what kind of seeds you want. Again, pick the highest level seed that you can do. It doesn't matter for the difficulty of the minigame. For me, I'm going to go ahead and choose the highest seed. One of the great things JX updated is actually you can now take up to 10,000 seeds. We're going to go ahead and do 100. You can do as many as you want, though. I'll explain a little bit later about the points and every hundred you get extra points and all that fun stuff. The other thing I want to go over before we start the mini game is the actual rewards themselves. Yeah, this checks out. Okay, so these are pretty cool. Like I said, you can go ahead and get a farmer's outfit and the farmer's outfit is like other skilling outfits where you get bonus XP up to two and a half percent. And every single piece of the outfit has a different experience rate until you get the full outfit. The other thing you can buy here is compost, super compost. Don't recommend buying those. Those are kind of a waste. Grape seeds. And then you can buy a Beloga's Blessing. And this is to create your wines of Zamorak basically while growing the grapes. And you can also buy herb boxes. And fun fact, herb boxes can also be purchased by Iron Men. So it's kind of a cool little update that we have that we have another way to at least get herbs. There's also a watering can and this holds up to a thousand doses of water. So that can also be useful if you're out in the world and need to water things. A seed box, which is great for Slayer because you can just throw your seeds in there and a herb sack. And of course, your auto weed. And auto weed is pretty sweet because you can toggle it on and off if you want it. But basically, this allows you to, whenever you're farming, if you weed a patch, it will never grow weeds again, which is absolutely phenomenal because that can be a pain sometimes. Now, the one thing I do want to call out for Beloga's blessing is that you actually need to go upstairs and talk to her. She's right up here, right upstairs. Now, when talking to her, you'll need 75k GP, and you'll also need to be wearing a Zamorak piece of any sort. So I just wore like the Mage Arena Zamorak capes. When you talk to her, you'll basically go through a chat dialogue, and that will unlock the blessings for you in order to create your Zamorak wines. That is all there is to it. The only thing that is left is to go ahead and start the mini game. So once you go ahead and pick up your seeds, open up the door. And this fertilizer does not matter. You do not need it. Now, again, I'm going to be showing you the 20 by 5 method. Another cool thing I did want to call out because sometimes you will get crashed is actually they made it to where this is a instanced mini game now, which is kind of cool. So you don't have to worry about people coming and crashing you and messing everything up. So with this method, you can do it on either side, the left or the right side. I like the right side personally. We're going to start at the very top in the middle and we're going to go left, right. And then we're going to go down left right down left right down left right and then we're going to go ahead and do this right side down here we're going to move to the left and do the left side and then we're going to finish on this left hand middle side and i'll show you what this looks like right here well i'll explain a little bit of what i'm doing so the very first step you're going to do is click on your seed after that 
go ahead and click the ground, and then you're going to use the watering can right after. And there you go. That is the entire minigame. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> the one thing I did want to call out while doing this, again, we're going back and forth. And I'm probably going to mess up a little bit because I'm also talking, which sometimes throw me off, throws me off. But we're going to go back and forth, planting the seed, and then we're going to go ahead and water. If you'll notice, I'm actually doing a animation cancel. As soon as I see that the seed is planted, I click the watering can and use the watering can and it skips that animation. So again, we're after this, we're gonna go down to the right. And this is timed, so I do kind of have to be halfway quick with it. But again, you're just gonna be planting the seed and you're gonna be using the watering can, planting the seed, watering can. It's all pretty basic. There is something that I wanna talk about with animation canceling when it comes to the watering cans when you don't have to use a seed. The first round is the only time that you have to use the seed and the watering can every single time when there's no seed in the ground. Once the seeds are in the ground, you only use watering cans. And you basically do this three times total. And then we'll come up here in this middle section. And that is it. That is your run. So now you'll go through the entire thing again, except you'll be just using watering cans. So if you'll notice, I'm going to go through and we're going to animation cancel again. As soon as you see the water spots, you can go ahead and move on to the next one. Now, I'm going to show you something that nobody else has really talked about with in their YouTube videos with animation canceling is let's say that I'm going to choose the very first watering can here on this next one. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click and I'm going to try to use it again on the next one as soon as I saw the watering spots. If you noticed, I couldn't use the watering can on the next one. That's just something that has to do with the programming itself uh, behind the scenes. But basically, you just need to make sure that you're using a different watering can so it has a different ID in the background. I believe that's why it's happening, at least. So all these items have IDs in the background, and you can't animation cancel with the same one. So that being said, again, just make sure you have eight watering cans. Just make sure you're using a different watering can than the one you chose previously, and you will be able to animation cancel. I hope that helps. It took me a couple minutes to figure this out when I was learning how to do Tithe Farm because nobody brought that up and it was very frustrating because I didn't understand. So normally what I like to do is start at the top and just kind of move along. So just go left to right from this top row. Now, again, I am talking and doing this, so I am very out of sync, but that is normally what you would do. And again, that is all there is to Tithe Farm. Not as scary as people made it out to be. Yeah, It, it does take some time. And again, this is the last time. This is our third round of, so we planted and then we watered and now we're watering again. And then after this, we need to go through and harvest and then we are done. So I guess there's really four total rounds that you need to do. And if you'll notice, they're getting bigger. And yeah, that, that is literally all there is to it. It is very easy. Uh, the very first time you do it, you may mess up. And then after that, I guarantee you'll be solid. If you have any issues, it's probably with the animation cancel. But again, it's super easy. Just make sure you're using a different watering can than the one that you previously used and you will be good to go. And again, just go ahead and harvest the same way that you planted. So if you're using rune light, you will see these little timers and those timers will actually expire. And when they do, the plant will die at any time, whether it's watering, whether it's growing, uh, at any time that goes down, and you haven't, it hasn't been watered or it hasn't been harvested, your plant will die. So again, you'll notice the timer like on this last one, it's about to go to zero, but that because it's been watered, it'll go through and, and uh, become a fully grown plant. So with that being said, that is literally all there is to it. I am gonna go ahead and, oh, when you're done also, make sure to fill up your watering cans before you start planting your seeds. And there's a, watering barrel right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do another three rounds of this so I can show you guys what it looks like when you go and turn in a hundred fruit. So I will see you guys back here very shortly. All right. So as you can see, I have a hundred fruits in my inventory. 
Now the way the fruit breakdown works is every three fruits you get and deposit, that is one point. And then every 100 fruits you plant, you get an additional two points. So the max per 100 fruits that you have is 35 points. So as you can see, I am at 67 points right now in the top right. I have 100 fruits. You deposit them in this deposit sack. There are multiple around the tithe farm. So we're going to go ahead and deposit and boom, 34,846 farming XP, which leads us to 37,100 farming XP. So a decent amount of XP there. The points went up to 102, so that is 35 points. So that is basically all there is to Tithe Farming. Now again, your XP will vary based on which tier of seed that you can plant, but your points will remain the same. So at level 34, you are still able to get 35 points every single time. And with that, guys, that is all I have for Tithe Farm. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Also, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I will answer them the best of my ability. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Turn up the summer vibes. Get off your phone one time, would you come outside? Cause we all here chilling. Yeah, it's the same, all same, all same. No, we don't play, no play, no games. Oh, they wanna talk, 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 talk. Why they gonna hate on, hate on me? Damn. But I am not tripping. I'm fly as a pigeon. This girl's been nine.